Okay, we are in the last session for this course. This is the last night that uh, we are going to have this uh, module. So now we are going to talk about um, two different uh, topics because in this case they are not related. One of these topics is um, a vocabulary. We are going to create a vocabulary again, but this is like, we had a topic kind of like this, but this is the opposite of that uh, vocabulary. And then we are going to talk about the task model. So the first topic that we are going to have tonight is antonyms. We are going to talk about opposite words because we need to know uh, what are the words that we can use. In some cases, uh, we were talking about in past sessions, we were talking about synonyms, because in that case, we were talking about synonyms of adjectives. And now we are going to use words to apply this antonym. So we're going to have a table in which we're going to have the English words and the Spanish words. But also, we are going to have the antonyms for those words. So, the thing is that we are going to have uh, two words to start uh, explaining what are the antonyms. So we are going to begin in because we have just one hour and today is the last day. So let's see. Vamos a hablar de los antónimos, las palabras opuestas. Así que vamos a tener... Eh, las palabras tanto en inglés como en español de los opuestos. So let me take this. Like this. Like this. Like this. And like this. Okay. So we are going to talk about Anthony. Like this. Okay, here we have the table in which we are going to write this vocabulary. So we're going to begin with these words. We're going to begin with young. And the antonym for this or the opposite for young is old. And in Spanish, young means joven. And in English, all mean, I mean, in Spanish, all means viejo. Así que estamos hablando de los opuestos. Then we have empty. And we have full. Empty in Spanish means vacío. And full in Spanish means lleno o pleno whatever it is the meaning that you like. We're going to put it like this, geno. Then we have useful, and we have useless. Useful in Spanish means útil. Use, useless in Spanish means inútil or innecesario. So in this case, inútil. Then, in this case, it is different because a city is a big place and a village is a short place or a small place, so they are a opposite. A city and a, a village. A city is una ciudad Big, big city. And a village is a small place. It's kind of uh, small. It's un pueblo. Then we have a question. And then an answer. Una pregunta. 
una respuesta. Then we are sad and happy. Sad means triste. Happy means feliz. Everything. Nothing. Everything means todo. Nothing means nada. Then we have professor. And then a student. Profesor. Estudiante. Then we have early. And we have late. Temprano. Tarde. Open and close. Abierto, cerrado. First, last. Primero y último. Seis. Dangerous. Seguro. Peligroso. Near or close. In far. Near means cerca, and far, lejos. Sugar and salt. Sugar means azúcar and salt, sal. Dry and wet. Seco, mojado. Often, seldom. Often means frecuentemente. And seldom, raramente. Always, never. Siempre, nunca. Same, different. We can say el mismo or something like that. And this one, different. Dirty, clean. Sucio limpio. Evening. Morning. Evening means por la tarde noche. Podemos ponerlo por la tarde. Morning por la mañana. Small, tall, and we have here pequeño, 
grande. Grande o alto. Rich, poor. Rich es rico, de riquezas. Poor, pobre. Stay lean. The ground. Sailing es el techo. The ground es el suelo. No el piso, el suelo. Animal and human. Animal, humano. Guilty, innocent, culpable, inocente, then we have hunger, rest. El hambre, la sed. The sun, the moon. El sol, la luna. So remember that we are talking about antonyms. We are talking about the opposite words um, of very useful words uh, in this case there are uh, very very common words that we can use to uh, create conversation sentences and all of that thing so in the case we have like general words or very very common words in which we are going to see what are the opposite for each of these um We have a long list, but we are not going to see uh, all of the words that we have in the list because it's going to be very, very, very long table. So we are going to use like a couple of words more, and then we are going to see the other topic because we have two topics. The first one is the antonyms, and the second one is the negative. Um, the negative models. So we're going to see what are the negative models and what are the uses that we're going to give to the negative models. So in that case, we are just going to have a more words, a couple of word more. And also we are going to see useful verbs. Vamos a ver en, en unas cuantas palabras más. Y luego vamos a ver verbos útiles que tienen también su opuesto y cuál es el significado en español de cada uno de ellos. So in that case, we are creating like um, another kind of vocabulary because it is necessary to have this kind of uh, knowledge about the opposite of some word because in previous uh, topics, we were talking about a synonym and now we need to talk about the uh, answer because we know we need to know um, uh, which words are opposite so we are going to continue with the list and then we are going to talk about the useful bird then we have but let me take this Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we have a brother, sister. 
hermano, hermana, he wore a guerra. Heavy, light, pesado, ligero. Mention, new, antiguo, nuevo. Easy, difficult, fácil, difícil. Begin, finish. Comenzar y terminar. Friend, enemy. Amigo, enemigo. Yesterday, tomorrow, ayer, mañana, cool or cold, warm and hot. Frío, caliente. Right, left. Derecha, izquierda. Let's see, we are going to write 10 more, 10 words more, but I will need your help. Uh, if you know what is the opposite of this word, you can tell me. And then we're going to write the opposite word. Si se saben la palabra opuesta a la que voy a ir poniendo, solo la dicen para irlas colocando. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's see. Inside. What is the antonym of inside? Outside. Good. Outside. Good. Outside. Inside is in eh, dentro. Fuera. It's low. Fat. Good, fast. Lento, rápido. Mary. Single. Good, single. Casado, soltero. Good. Bad. bad. Good, bad. Bueno, malo. Strong. Mm -hmm. 
Weak. Good, weak. Fuerte. Débil. Expensive. Cheap. Good, cheap. Caro y barato. Long. A small. Another one? Short. Good, short. Largo, corto. Next one. Now. After. Another one. Tomorrow? Mm. Yesterday? Mm -mm. It's a short word. Later? Good, later. Now, later. Ahora, más tarde. Interesting. Boring. Boring. Mm -hmm. Boring. Good. Interesante. Aburrido. And the last one, normal. What is the opposite of normal? I can give a clue. Uh, this word appears in the name of a movie about uh, a doctor that after strange. Good, it's strange. Normal, extraño. Perfect. This was a, a really good reference. Okay, now we're going to see what are the useful verbs that we can use and what are the antonyms for these verbs. I think I will use one, two, three, four, five, six. I will use 20 of this list because if not, it's going to be kind of boring because then we are going to talk about a day pass. Um, I mean, we're going to talk about the past model. So we are going just to use 20 uh, useful verbs for these five. So let's see. There's 20. We have the first one, and here we are going to use useful verbs. And we have here is Spanish. But the first one we have is to walk, and the opposite is to run. Caminar, correr. 
then we have to attach to detach. Now this means atar is separate. To go up and to go down. In this case, we can say subir or montar. And the next one is bajar. Then we have to increase. To decrease. And here, aumentar, disminuir. Stop. To continue. Detener o continuar. Detener o parar. To take off. In this case, it's not like taking up something, talking about clouds. In this case, it's something different. So landing. So in this case, in Spanish, this means despegar. This is talking about um, planes and flying and a lot of things. Y aterrizar. Se put on. To remove. Poner y quitar. To forget. To remember. Olvidar, recordar. To show, to hide. Mostrar, esconder. To save money, to spend. Ahorrar, gastar, to build, to destroy, construir y destruir, to arrive, to leave. Llegar, partir, irse. To enter, to go out. Entrar, salir. To love, To cry. Reír. Llorar. To fail. To buy. Vender. Comprar. To break, to fix. In this case, romper o quebrar y reparar. 
to lend, to borrow, to start. I have a question. Tell me. In the case like uh, for paper, uh, paper, what is what uh, word is can I use? In which one? For paper, romper. Ah, when you are talking about paper. In that case, yes. um, you are not going to use break because in that case, you are using it for, for something like different. Uh, in that case, it's a read. You are using like uh, paper, clothes, and something like that. You are going to use a read. Could you put in the chat? It's a, a very, very simple, um, it's like just to say read. Let me, let me have it like this. This one, read. Como rasguñar, desgarrar. That is the, okay. the one that you are going to use, read. Thanks. You're welcome. So in this case, we have, it was saying that we have lend and borrow, that the first one is, um, in this case, it, it's como, it's como darlo. In that case, it's como, yo lo presto, yo lo doy, yo se lo, yo se lo doy a alguien más. Y to borrow es pedir prestado. So in this case, is prestar. So ustedes lo dan, ustedes lo prestan. And to borrow is que alguien se lo pida prestado a ustedes. Es como cuando ven a alguien que necesita alguna cosa, ustedes se lo dan por voluntad propia. O sea, de ustedes nace. Darlo. En el otro es como decirle, me prestas un borrador, me prestas eh, un lápiz o something like that. Es alguien preguntándole a ustedes que les preste algo. Then we have to win and to lose. Ganar y perder. And the last one that we're going to use is to take and to give. Tomar, in some cases we can say like in, in not a, a really good way. It's like just take and give is dar. Tomar y dar. En muchos de los casos es como eh, el de lend and borrow. Porque en el de tomar alguien está tomando por sí mismo. Y en eh, give es que nosotros lo demos por voluntad propia. So, give me, give me a second. So now, in these uh, cases, we have like different uh, words that we can use. And when we are reading or we are writing uh, something, we need to have two different things um, 
that uh, we need to keep in mind. The first one are the antonyms and the second one are the synonyms. Because when we are uh, writing, uh, we need to have options to change words. Because uh, when we are writing, uh, we tend to uh, repeat the same word a lot of times. And if we have the synonyms, we can change the word, but we are not going to change the meaning of the sentence. So in that case, it is not like we are going to uh, change the whole thing because uh, we have words that can use almost the same meaning. And in the case of the antonyms, if we need to uh, talk about a main idea and then we need to uh, change that uh, word in that idea, we need to have the antonym. So it is very necessary that we have this in mind because it, it can help us to improve the way in which we write. Because we are going to have like many, many options in which we can change, use, reuse words and all of that thing. So now for the last part, we are going to talk about the, um, the past models. Uh, we were talking about models, conditionals, uh, sentence, and a lot of things. So now we are going to see what are the, uh, the past models, how can we use it, what are the structures, uh, some, um, some examples about uh, these uh, topics. There's some explanations. What are the meanings for these past models? And all of those uh, things that we can know about this topic. So let me change this. If we're going to talk about past models. And I'm going to change the page here. The first thing is that we can use model verbs with the past participle of the main verb. In this case, uh, I'm not going to write the structure right now because I just want to say something. Um, it is necessary that we have a list of verbs, list of uh, the different uh, ways in which we can use the verbs um, because um, we need to have the base form of the verb the past participle of the verb and all other things because um, if we have this document or this or um, or these elements these tools is going to be very very uh, useful for us in in this process because we can find a list of verbs that has the three parts, the base form, the past simple, and the past participle. And if we have the whole document in which we can find uh, all of the verbs, it is going to be very useful for us uh, because we can uh, learn the verbs and we can memorize the other two parts that we are going to use for this uh, process. If you can search the whole list of regular and irregular verbs with the base form, the past simple, is the past participle, and even a sum of this list has the Spanish meaning for the verb. Así que si ustedes pueden buscar ese, ese listado, o creo que se lo, se lo voy a mandar yo a ustedes porque eh, yo tengo el documento en PDF donde está la lista de verbos regulares e irregulares. 
porque eso le va a servir a ustedes cuando estén utilizando estructuras, ya sea en pasado o cuando necesiten utilizar el pasado participio, el pasado simple de los verbos, ustedes ya van a tener su lista donde viene el verbo en su forma base, el verbo, cómo se utiliza con el pasado simple y cómo lo vamos a utilizar con el pasado participio. Y también en el documento PDF viene la parte español. Hay una parte en español para que nos vayamos acostumbrando igual al significado en español y cómo se escribe y se pronuncia en inglés. Así que les voy a mandar esta lista eh, hoy para que la tengan ahí, la descarguen y la tengan ahí. Porque, porque sí, les va a servir para que ustedes la vayan estudiando. Son bastantes verbos, eh, eso sí, pero está separado por verbos regulares y verbos irregulares. So I will send to you that um, document because you need to have it in your uh, devices. So, continue with the topic. We are going to see the structure for this one. And we have the model plus have plus past participle. And it says that we use model with uh, this way when we are talking about the situation that happened in the past and can be changed anymore. So this is also we are going to use it for action that has ended in the past and we cannot do anything to change uh, anything in that situation because we already know that it's and we don't have to do anything to change because it is not like we can do anything. And we have an example. Well, we have three examples. Let me say this one. And it says, you could have hurt yourself. You could have heard yourself. They should have warned me. And the last one, he must have got lost. In that case, uh, we can also use God for the past participle, but in some cases, we can use a garden, so it is normal to change that. And it says it is the same form as in the third conditional.
So in that case, we're not going to change the, the verbs and anything like that because yeah, you know that when we are using models, auxiliary verbs, in all of those things, we're not going to change the form of the verbs and anything like that because it is not necessary. Um, the, the auxiliary or the model is changing the the subject sign that if it is not necessary to change anything. And it says in spoken English, it will often hear showing forms like could, should, and would. In that case, it's like more in spoken in, in a spoken English. This is not very common in written English. In this case, it's just like when you are um, talking with someone. To make a negative form as not after the model. It is common to use contract negative forms like couldn't and shouldn't. So in this case, it's very, very common to use it. The sample. She shouldn't have said that. We couldn't have foreseen that change of plan. He may not have noticed the error. To make a question with a model verb referring to the past, we swap the model and the subject. So it is almost the same because in all of the questions or maybe in many of the questions, we need to, to change the order of some words to make the interrogative uh, sentence. Then we have the structure that is model plus subject plus have plus past participle. 
plus the question mark. Then we have the example. Should I have called to earlier? So I have a call. And the next one, would he have believed me? Third case, um, I mean, have in that case, is not time. In this case, it's the same. It's structure, just you need to, to move a little bit some things uh, to create uh, this question. So what is the meaning of a fast model? We have the first one and it is, could have a plus fast participle. This one is something was possible in the past or there was a probability, but it didn't happen. So in this case, it's talking about something that was possible in the past or there was a, like a probability, but at the end, it didn't happen. So it's just like something that maybe could happen, but no. And we have some examples. He could have slept till noon, but the alarm clock woke him up. Then we have, we could have a stay longer, but we decide to leave. And the last one, he could have been seriously injured Fortunately, nothing happened. Then we have student have plus class participle. This is the number two. So this one is opposite. So it could have something what a hypothetically impossible. Aquí es lo opuesto, ¿verdad? Esto era hipotéticamente imposible. En cambio, en el primero era algo que pudo haber pasado, pero que al final 
no pasó. En este no es nada así parecido. And we have some examples. I can believe if Kevin didn't show up, he couldn't have forgotten about the meeting. Thanks for your help. I couldn't have managed without you. In this case, we need to keep in mind that we are not going to use can uh, as a past model. However, we can use can as a synonym of to couldn't. Así que normalmente no vamos a utilizar el can como eh, past model por obvias razones, ¿verdad? Pero sí podemos utilizar can, el negativo, eh, como un sinónimo de couldn't. So in that case, when it is negative, we can use it in past model, but uh, in present, it is not like we are going to use uh, can for the example, just can. And we have the example, the boy can have written such an essay on his own. So in this case, we are going to end here the information that we have for this session. Because this is the last day and we are going to end the course right now because uh, it's like, uh, we have just one month and time flies as so. well. Now is the end for this course. I wish you luck with all the activities and keep doing this process. You are doing very, very well. 
and I hope you keep fighting and you keep learning and you keep doing all the things that you want to do. So I just want to say have a really good night, have a really good end of week. And if you're going to have your vacation next week, have a really good or happy vacation. So thank you for your time and have a really good night. Thank you, teacher. Thanks for you. Thanks. Good Happy vacation. Thank you. Good night. Good night.